In the year 20XX, giant space turkeys from the moon landed in Haran declaring peace and prosperity on the people of the city. As they had travelled a great distance to help elevate the society of mankind, they were worshipped as the leaders of the city and were even televised on the local community television broadcast channels to place hope and love into the hearts of the people. But, unbeknownst to the giant space turkeys, they were carrying a virus that is not harmful to their race, but to humans. A radioactive mutated syphilis that is spreading by coming into contact with the majestical birds from yonder. The virus spread, causing the humans to create a great society where joy and love and understanding and selflessness spread among the populace, with severe cases of hugging small animals and vomiting rainbows. <sighs> Not really. It's fucking zombies again. Brought to us by those guys that make movies, and brought to us by the guys that make Dead Island. Dead City, at Dying Light, follows the formula of all the other sandbox style first person games of the recent era. Except the melee combat is awesome. It did take a while though for the combat to begin feeling fun. You know, kicking and swinging wrenches is quite dull after a while, but when you start to fill out the skill trees, the game starts to pick up and feel a lot better. The free running aspect as well didn't feel quite right at the start of the game, but after filling out the skill tree of agility, it really started feeling good. The three skill trees, which are survivor, agility and power, helps you with your crafting, your free running skills as mentioned, and literally just belting the enemies harder with baseball bats. I'm really enjoying a lot of the level ups in the agility tree. Just being able to slide under holes in fences on the fly, pushing the grabbing zeds off a bit faster, being able to run almost through a horde and just vaulting over the zeds on the fly and slide kicking to break their legs. The crafting system hasn't really had too much of an overhaul since they did it in Dead Island. But the main benefit I did find is the way that they handled the inventory space. The inventory isn't limited, only the raw weapons are. Any crafting materials, weapon upgrades, valuable items, they have unlimited inventory space. And to get more space for weapons, it's just a skill upgrade. The map seems to be a decent size and the views are quite good from the top of the comms towers. Although getting back down is kind of interesting. There is a level of interaction within the world, being able to set pools of oil and fuel alight with fireworks and molotovs. The uh, fireworks tend to work very well in this situation as the noise attracts the Zeds, calling them into the fire. Speaking of noise attracting the Zeds, later gameplay starts to get quite intense with finding military weapons and the day-night cycle. I thought I'd struck gold when I found some grenades only to throw one at a brute and ring the dinner bell for half the city. Machine guns are also very similar. Very satisfying, but they make more problems than they solve. Modified iron pipes and electric knives it is. As for the day-night cycle, it's really nice in the game. Adding an element of urgency in the middle of a quest or scouting of areas. Sure, the night can be skipped by resting at safe houses, but... Why do this? This is where the game gets interesting, guys. During the day, yeah, there are hordes of zombies and they shamble about, but at night, that's where the nightmares come out. These special infected have a cat and mouse chase mode. Trust me when I say in the early game, just run. During their pursuits, they leap over buildings, 
leap through alleyways, chase you down, and try to give you a big giant kiss with their teeth-like things. But the longer you stay out at night, the more experience points you get. And of course if you die, you lose them. But hey, it's about risk and reward. But anyway, enough talk. I finally finished fixing these gas pipes, so I'd better let Jeff know that I've finished up. Well done, soldier. I'll open the main pressure gate. Then prepare your eyes for a feast of controlled pyro combustion. I think I should watch this from a distance. If you insist, you got ten seconds. Five. Found Jeff, and the gas is back on. That's a relief. Told you, he's irreplaceable. Yeah, well, I'm afraid you're gonna have to find a replacement. <laughs> 